seedling here. This, this tree. This is an ash tree, right? So there's American ash all through the dairy bush, and then there's this tree, and there's this one over here. Its, it's branches are hard to reach. Uh, its living branches are up there. So, so I'll, I'll uh, see if I can get something to break off here to show you. Its stem is square, not round. Can you see that in the? Uh, yep. Yep. This is Fraxinus quadrangulata, the blue ash. It's vanishingly rare in Canada. The only known locations are on the north shore of Lake Erie and here. And here. That's awesome. So people say, well, how did it get here? Well, the obvious thing is that somebody planted it. Well, excuse me. Okay. Never mind what I said about size versus age. Yeah. That little tree there is not 120 years old, so it's not part of the original forest. Yep. Should I go over and stand beside it to give a scale? Yeah, that's good. I've never cored this. I don't want to hurt it. But it's, it's not very old. And certainly, these saplings behind us, over here, there's three of them, these are just little babies. So, one of the values of the dairy bush, unknown to people, is that it might be a reservoir of species that will replace other species when they die out from diseases. The blue ash doesn't get emerald ash borer. American ash does. Yeah. So, there's more hope here. Now, I don't know. Maybe maybe some magical uh, fairy, wood fairy, came in and planted this thing and has been fertilizing it and that's why it's here. <clears throat> I don't think so. I think it's come here by itself. And I have this feeling that if these two specimens of blue ash can survive here, that you can get others to come in to the same sort of place. And maybe there's a little bit of hope there in the event that uh, American ash disappears from the dairy bush.